Okay, we have question five. It says a 5 kg block is released from rest from a height of 5 meter and slides down a frictionless incline to point P as shown in the diagram below. It then moves along a frictionless horizontal portion PQ and finally moves up a second rough incline plane. It comes to a stop at point R, which is 3 meters above the horizontal. Now we are told that this surface here is frictionless. And then also this part here is frictionless. And only Q to R has friction. Right. Now the frictional force, which is a non-conservative force between the surface and the block is 18 Newton. So this is the frictional force we'd experience uh, along this inclined plane. Right. Then 5.1 says using energy principles only, calculate the speed of the block at point P. Right. So now if it says using energy principles, we are limited to one of these three formulas. We can use the work energy theorem. We can use the work done by non-conservative forces. Or we can use the mechanical energy. Right. Sum of mechanical energy. So we say sum of mechanical energy at point A is equal to sum of mechanical energy at point B in this case right so now we want to check which formula would be best for this one uh, for for solving or for calculating the speed at p right so we are told that this part here let's call it let's call this point a and then this point p we are we are told that this part here is frictionless right but then we know of one formula that works best when we are told that the friction the, the surface is frictionless this one here the the formula for the sum of a uh, mechanical energy this one works best when we are told that the surface is frictionless so it works when we are told that there are no frictional forces and then we know if there are no frictional forces this means it is an isolated system right so this is an isolated system so in solving 5.1 we can just use that formula we say sum of mechanical energy at point a is equal to the sum of mechanical energy at point p in this case right now what do we have sum of mechanical energy is the sum of the objects kinetic energy and potential energy so we have mgh finally and half mv initially squared right and then this side again we have mgh but finally plus half mvf squared now it's just a matter of substituting what is our mass our mass is 5 and then we have 9.8 the height initially meaning the height at point a is 5 so we've been given that it's 5 then plus the mass is 5 but the velocity at that point remember they said it has been released from rest so from rest tells us that the v initially is 0 then we have what here we have 0 so that 0 squared so you have to substitute even though you know that this will just be zero then mass this is 5 9.8 then what is the height finally so this is the height okay so this is the height finally meaning the height at b or at point p so we know at point p that's on the ground right so there's no relative height here so we say zero and then plus half what is our mass five and then the velocity finally that's what we are looking for vf squared now punching all this in your calculator it will give us 245 and then here we will get 2.5 vf squared now dividing both sides by 2.5 we end up with vf squared is equals to 98 but remember we are not looking for vf squared we are looking for vf so we can square root both sides and then our vf is equals to 9.90 meters per second rounded off to two decimal places now 5.3 says explain why the kinetic energy at point p is the same as that at point q right so now we've been told remember we've been told from p to q this is frictionless right so now we want to understand why the kinetic energy is the same from p to q now we can explain this we can say between p to, p to q there are no frictional forces right so we say no frictional forces between p and q then between p and q that means we have an isolated system whereby our f net is zero newton that means our kinetic energy will be conserved so if you look at it uh, according to this formula if our f net is zero newtons that means if in our w net is equal to zero joules right so remember um, our w net 
is equals to change in ek right so if we say w net is zero then that will tell you that our ek finally minus ek initially would look like this then obviously uh, we'd have ek initially is equals to ek final so if in the formula proves that then okay 5.3 says explain the term non-conservative force so non-conservative force is a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points is dependent on the part taken so that's how you um, define it for two marks three okay so 5.4 says calculate the angle theta of the slope qr right so we are required to calculate angle theta but from here we can see that in order to calculate theta we have to make use of the trig ratios right now from this one let's understand why it is seven marks we can see that having to calculate our theta there is a missing value again we don't have the displacement from q to r that means in order to calculate theta here we first need to get our delta x right so once a question is seven marks it's probably telling you that you need to find a missing value first and then go you uh, and then utilize that value to then calculate the one that you are looking for so we have the delta x here and then we can see that if if we now have the value of delta x we can now use a sign which is opposite over hypotenuse in order to get the value of theta now let's come to this from q to r we've been told that here there's friction right so as we can see here it finally finally moves up a second rough incline which is this one qr and then this one if it is rough then we know that there is friction right so if there is friction we know the energy principle to use when we are told that there is friction the best one to use is work done by non-conservative force and you can even see the hint from the question here we are told that the frictional force which is a non-conservative force between the surface and the block is what 18 newton we are even given the value of the kinetic frictional force now before we can use this formula let's make sure that fk is the only non-conservative force that we have there so uh, having to draw our free body diagram let's indicate all the forces we have the normal force we have the fg perpendicular and then this side sliding down the surface will be our fg parallel then we will have fk like that right now we can see that the only non-conservative force is your kinetic frictional force right where your fg which is fg parallel and fg perpendicular indicated by these two components is a conservative force the normal force is also a conservative force only kinetic frictional force is a non-conservative force it depends on the part taken by the object right so now let's apply our formula we have work done by non-conservative force is equals to change in ek plus change in ep right now what is our non-conservative force we only have um the fk so we can just say fk delta x cos theta now breaking down this one we have half m vf squared minus vi squared then plus mg height finally minus height initially now what is our fk we've been told that it is 18 and then we don't have the delta x that's what we are looking for in this question then cos the theta will be 180 degrees because we know the kinetic frictional force will always oppose the the, the direction of motion or the displacement then this is half our mass um is five then the v finally we are told that at uh, at point r what will happen to the block at point r the, the block comes to a stop right so meaning the velocity there is zero so we substitute zero square here then the v initially this will be the velocity that we calculated at point p remember at point p we said the velocity is 9.90 meters per second but then since we said that the kinetic energy at point p is the same as that at point q that means the velocity is also the same 9.90 meters per second because remember the mass of the block will remain unchanged that means the, the velocity also needs to remain unchanged if we say the kinetic energies are the same now that means here we have 9.90 square this will have negative 18 delta x here and then if we punch all this in a, in a calculator we'll end up with negative 
point zero two five. Then we divide both sides by negative eighteen. Divide both sides by negative eighteen. Our delta x will now be five point four five meters. Right. Five point four five meters. Now remember if we now have five point four five here. So we can just draw out this one, this triangle there. We have theta here, we have 3, we have 5.45. So in order to calculate, we can use our sine, whereby we say sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? So that means sine theta is equal to uh, 3 over 5.45. Then calculating our theta, we say theta is equal to sine. And then we have 3 over 5.45. Now, if you punch all that in your calculator, round that off, you'll have 33.40 degrees. Awesome.